fucking beautiful though? They're like kings. the first fan Welcome to Mr. Larry's Craft Show. Thank you for coming back again. It's been a little bit since we've really gotten to sit down with each other and have a project, but I'm glad you're here today. Maybe that's why I'm a little excited. We're going, oh yeah, my friends are back here. My TV, my television friends. Hello, television friends. <laughs> I am all a tizzy today, but actually we have a very serious thing to discuss. And that's our project, which is decorative bathroom soap. <laughs> have you ever been to a house where they have like soap in a dish and it's shaped like seashells or something and you are not allowed to touch it, don't you touch that soap! And it's because it's meant for guests or it's decorative or whatever. And I'm certainly not one to begrudge someone for their decorations. But I do find that my favorite decor items tend to be things that are both beautiful and functional. Mostly. Today we're talking about soap. Soap has been very, very important for all of us for the last several months. And that's because it is very important in helping us to fight off the spread of disease and illnesses of all kinds, and certainly of the COVID-19 virus. Washing your hands is one of the most responsible things you can do next to wearing a mask during these times. So this little project is just a way for us to beautify that whole process and to remind you all of its importance while allowing you to do something that's both fun and allows you to express yourself. We can all have clean, healthy, better lives, and why not make them colorful and bright at the same time? There are three things that I wanna share with you that will help us to not only get started on this project, but make it successful and give us a little bit of background. Starting with thing number one, Ancient Babylonians were squeaky clean compared to others of the time. In fact, there's evidence that they likely used soap making processes as far back as 2800 BCE. Ancient Egyptians and other civilizations used a combination of animal and vegetable oils paired with alkaline salts to clean wounds and skin diseases. This started the first widely spread hygiene practices. And interestingly, the word soap is believed to be derived from the name Sapo, which is an ancient site for animal sacrifices. And that brings us to thing number two. Soap and those aforementioned hygiene practices fell out of fashion over the next few centuries. And it really wasn't until 1850 or so when soap became widely available and affordable that those hygienic practices started to pick back up. About 100 years later, we have the introduction of detergents or synthetic soaps to the marketplace. This not only makes soap and hygiene practices a part of everyday life, but it also changes soap making from being a chore to something that people could do as a craft in their own homes. I have a friend, Justin, who makes soaps with his business, The Cat and the Raven. He makes wonderful, natural, richly scented soaps, and I recommend that you check them out. Soap making at home is a great way to spend some time when you have to be inside. Um, you can make it as colorful and as aromatic as you like. It's a great tactic to keep yourself from buying wigs that you don't need. Okay, I'm done. And that brings us to thing number three. Our soap making project today will feature a soap that's made to be melted in the microwave or in a double boiler. You'll need one package of white opaque soap, and I'm using a shea butter variation of it. You'll also need some clear soap. The clear soap is what we'll place the color in, and then the white soap will be used to back it, which will allow us to see these brilliant colors that we use. And we'll also need some soap colorants. Uh, I have a variety of colors. We'll also be using some alcohol and a spray bottle. You'll use this to bind your various layers of soap together. So this is really important to have. I also have a couple of scents that I'll be using for the soaps. I have uh, one cucumber melon because I want it to be the year 2000 again. And then I have this watermelon one. I guess I'm just in the melons today. I have a assortment of toothpicks. Uh, you'll need just some skewers, something that you can use to mix the soap. Uh, and you'll need several of them if you're doing multiple colors like I will be doing. We'll need a mold. I wanted to go for something simple so that the colors of the soap could shine. So I got these geometric shapes, but you can find all sorts of shapes. You'll need a sharp knife to help you break up the soap. Uh, if you are a person who needs assistance using a knife like this, 
I recommend that you have another person on hand. You'll need all this and a microwave. If you can work near a microwave, that will be a better scenario. Um, you have to work quickly with the soap because it does start to solidify once it's liquid. Just be quick and cautious. And let's get started on this project. For this method of soap making, preparation is essential. We'll start by making sure that our space is prepared and that all of our materials are ready to go. Um, I'm going to slice up my soap into cubes and then put that into my two microwave safe dishes. Um, and then I'm going to also take the caps off of my colorants just so that I can mix them as quickly as possible, as well as the um, scent. I'm using a book to level my mold up a bit so that I can create a gradient of color. With my heated soap, which I put in the microwave for about 40 seconds and 10 second bursts, I'll add in a few drops of that soap colorant and then stir it up with a toothpick. Once I start pouring it into the mold, I want to make sure that I get some of that soap onto every surface on the bottom because that's my top soap surface. If I have any gaps or spaces, I'm going to create a hole or a pocket and I want to avoid that. This soap starts to solidify very quickly, so once you pour, let it sit for 20 minutes before you do anything else. Now that the soap has sat for 20 minutes and it's solid, I'm going to flip it to the other side so that the color will run down the opposite direction. I've mixed my color into the soap. I'll spritz the old soap with the alcohol spray and then I'll do the exact same pour as before with this blue soap. You just want to make sure that you pour as quickly as you can, again touching all of the surface of the previously poured soap so that they adhere together and you create that lovely color grade effect. Allow that to sit for another 20 minutes and then lay it flat and I'll use the remaining um, unused yellow soap to level off this layer of soaps. This will also intensify the color a bit and give me a little bit more green in the middle of my yellow and blue. Again, remember to spritz with alcohol first because I forgot to do this several times in my test runs last week and it's still usable but the soap doesn't adhere to itself as well. Let that sit for another 20 minutes. In the meantime, here's some of my test soap that I was really impatient with and I think I can still use it with uh, a different sort of idea using a watercolor technique of soap making that I have just kind of stumbled on. I'm using differently colored soaps. I'm gonna tip that soap mold into a different direction and just kind of pour in some other colors. I'll do this a few different times with a few different colors and layer them on top of each other until I create the sort of painterly effect into the soap. Once I'm satisfied with the number of colors and the placement of the colors that I have here, I'll top that off with some clear soap to level off that layer before applying the final white opaque layer to all of our soaps. The white soap works the same way as the clear soap. I'll chop that apart and microwave it for 10 seconds until it's melted and then I'll start to pour that directly on top of the nearly finished soap, again making sure to spray with the alcohol spray before I pour. From there I let it sit until it's completely solidified anywhere from 20 minutes to a few hours which is what I recommend just to make sure that it doesn't stay too soft as you try to remove it from the packaging. Oh wow. It looks like these came out pretty easily but I actually ended up using a knife to slice into the sides of some of these. Um, I did manhandle these molds a bit um, but the soap came out fine, and let's give it a test run to see how it works. 
while we're testing the soap and, and actually using the soap, you can also use this as an opportunity to smooth out any rough edges or to get rid of any extra runoff or anything like that. We did it! Or you watched me do it. Either way it counts. I hope you've had a good time today and that you've learned something or saw something that might inspire you to make something of your own soon. This is just a little bar of soap, but it could be a nice way to say I love you to someone or a nice reminder for someone to wash their dang hands or um, just a way to spend the afternoon. If you have any thoughts or ideas for me, please send them my way. And maybe you'll join me next week as we make something different. I hope that you are staying healthy and finding some warmth and getting some sunlight whenever you can. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Wash your hands, wash your hands. Do something, wash your hands. Hey, 